Hey and welcome, I'm Lorelai. This is Namastrom Yoga. Welcome to another vinyasa yoga practice. Let's get a little bendy. Let's go ahead and have a seat on the mat and this is really just our moment of check-in, moment of seeing how we are, seeing where we're coming from, and maybe even thinking about what it is that we're looking for in our practice tonight so that we're not practicing absent-mindedly. We want to have a sense of intentionality to it. Close your eyes. Let your shoulders stack. So just notice if you have a tendency to really hunch around your back. It's pretty natural for a lot of people, but you know, take the time to really adjust yourself. If you have to sit up on something with your hips to make that possible, do so now as well. And then closing the eyes, head floats on top of the neck, tune into your breath. And then let's just do a simple seated twist. Left hand to right knee, turn over the right shoulder. Breathing here this whole time. And switch directions. Let's come to hands and knees for some cat-cow stretches. Starting with just simple things, just to get the body woken up, warmed up. You can kind of just check in with how we're feeling physically. Notice if there's any tension or resistance. Notice how your energy is. I think that energy level is an important thing because oftentimes we spend our days doing things whether we have the energy for them or not. We just go on autopilot. But we shouldn't have to be on autopilot in the yoga class. So if you're feeling low energy tonight, give yourself a milder, more moderate practice. Whereas if you feel like you've got a lot of energy, then you can let yourself be a little bit more challenged perhaps and really exert yourself through your practice. But I think it's worth noticing where you're at and letting that inform your practice as opposed to just doing it despite how you're feeling. And then from here, walk the hands just a little further forward and we're gonna step the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. So the left knee is gonna obviously still be down but we want the right knee over the ankle and then just allow your upper body to lower down Maybe on your hands, maybe on the forearms, but your right shoulder should be able to be inside of that right knee. And then you can let your head hang here. This is just a stretch. Some of you will feel it more intensely than others. It shouldn't be painful for, by any stretch of the imagination, but just breathe into whatever is going on. And then if your left forearm is down, just root into that forearm and just take the right arm up and twist. If you're on your left hand, same thing. It's just a twist here on the side. And then turning back to the floor, plant both palms. Uh, let's go to downward facing dog. So once you step, step your back foot back, go ahead and lift the knees. Root into the hands. Take a little time to pedal through the feet. This pose is designed to really elongate the upper body all the way from the hands to the hips. So the arms should feel like they're getting a stretch. The spine as well. It's not a back bend, but probably want to think a little bit more in that direction than in the rounded direction. Um, but if anything, you want to maybe like backbend your upper back, but not backbend your low back, if you can think about that at all. And those two things, ideally they should sort of balance out so that the spine is just really long. Let's take the knees back to the floor. 
And then we'll step the left foot forward for this low lunge on the other side. Left knee over ankle, right knee is down still, and then let your upper body lower if possible. And then keeping the right arm or hand down, take the left arm into the air for a twist. Turning back to the floor, plant the palms, and then this time let's step to plank pose. So keep the shoulders over the wrists as you bring that left leg back to meet the right long through the center of the body. You might almost even feel like you're pushing the heels back to stretch the calves, but then also reach your head forward and engage the core. Lowering down, maybe knees come down first, but then bend the elbows, just carefully, slowly lower the heart between the hands. And then take the hands behind the back, interlace your fingers, lift your shoulders, slide the shoulders onto the back, and then lift your chest, lift your hands off your waist, maybe lift the feet off the floor. And release the hands, bend the elbows, bring the hands next to the chest. Cobra pose, heart forward, shoulders back. Elbows are a little soft in cobra, so the arms probably aren't gonna be completely straight. In up dog, they can straighten out, but here there's a little bit of softness. And downward facing dog again. Hips high, heart back. And this time, instead of like bopping around the legs, um, see if you can find a little bit of stillness, which doesn't mean there's no like deepening because actually we do want to continue to deepen the pose. It's just very subtle so that there's an inner sense of stillness, even though there's still life in the pose. Look forward, bring the feet to the top of the mat about hip distance apart with soft knees so that that upper body can just dangle. Maybe sway a little, you can nod or shake the head. If you wanna grab the elbows, go ahead. roll up and down a few times really gently so release the elbows if you've got them keep the knees bent and try to come all the way up to standing and reach the arms on an inhale and then exhale swan dive forward over the legs bend the knees at the bottom inhale roll up exhale diving down bend the knees inhale roll up Exhale, dive down, and then coming up one more time. And then at this point, palms together in front of the heart, but walk the feet together so the big toes touch, heels are slightly apart. Maybe close the eyes as you tune into the breath here for a moment. And then we're gonna go into some sun A's. So inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, fold your body. Inhale, half lift, take Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step to plank and either lower Chaturanga or you can take those knees down first. And then inhale, maybe just shifting to up dog or cobra. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. We'll do a series of sun A's 
When you get to down dog, this one we're holding a little bit longer, but you can either take it for just one breath, which is probably what I'll do, or if you like holding down dog for up to five breaths, you absolutely can. It will reduce the total number of sun salutations that you do, but you'll still be practicing. Inhale, look forward, exhale, step, walk, or you can hop forward, however you wanna get there is fine. Feet together, inhale, half lift. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, reverse that swan dive. And palms together in front of the heart. Let's keep it flowing. Inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. One inhale or more, but then exhale, step walk or hop forward. Inhale to lift, exhale fold, inhale rise, and exhale palms together. And I generally stop cueing at this point so that you can really focus on your own practice. The sequence will remain the same and we'll take a couple more minutes here with this flow. Let's get to our next down dog and we'll add on from there. So take your time, but when you get there, just hold. Breathing. The flow of breath should remain consistent even when we're holding a pose. So try to keep a sense of rhythm, even in stillness. Lift the heels, reach the right leg up, down dog split, but then open the hip. Keep the legs straight, but try to stack your right hip above the left without dipping your left shoulder, right? So that the twist is in the low body, but not the upper. And then look forward, step forward with that right foot. High lunge now. So the back knee is gonna remain lifted as we come on up finding balance. Back heel is not on the floor, but you can reach through it. Lunge deep, arms go up. Now let's take the left elbow outside of the right leg, going for kind of a deeper twist here. You can use your right hand on your right thigh to really kind of gain a little bit of um, uh, depth there, so bringing the upper arm really outside of the thigh. And then leaning your weight forward to the right foot, step the left foot up next to it for a prayer twist. Get the big toes together and then try to line up your knees there together as well. And then keeping the legs as they are, chair pose, so just untwist the upper body, 
Come on up, reach the arms. And then exhale, Uttanasana, straighten your legs. Inhale, half lift. And then vinyasa. You can skip the vinyasa. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for more of a low key practice tonight, you could just go straight to down dog and not worry about this vinyasa. Let's take the left leg up. And again, we're lifting the leg, but then we're letting the leg turn open and the left hip lift higher than the right. But try to keep your shoulders level up front. Neck is still relaxed, head is still hanging. Look forward, step forward. Crescent pose, high lunge. And we're gonna twist it, this time to the left. So use your left hand if you want help. Bring your right arm around outside the left leg. Press the palms, twist the torso. And step forward for your prayer twist. So right foot comes up to the next to the left, feet together, knees together. And chair, Utkatasana. Weight on your heels, take another inhale, exhale, Uttanasana, inhale, Ardha, and move through Vinyasa, let's head back to Down Dog. Let's take the right leg up, square hip, so toes are flexed down this time. Uh, we're not trying to stack the hips at all, but keep them level with each other. Let's now move the shoulders forward over the wrists. We're keeping the hips level, but we're gonna then level everything out. One-legged plank. And then from one-legged plank, we're gonna roll to the outer edge of the left foot for a side plank. See if you can keep that little uh, space between the feet so that that top foot just hovers above the bottom one. Lift the hips, lift the top arm. And then we're gonna step the right foot forward for warrior one. So from here, just see if you can step it, and then you'll have to adjust your back foot. Come on up. Virabhadrasana one. Notice if your left hip has pulled back a lot with that back heel down, it's its tendency. So maybe just see if you can shift that a bit, trying to level off. Let's move to warrior three. You might keep the arms extended, you might bring palms together in front of the heart, but transfer your weight to the right foot and float the left leg up. Once again, we're trying to work with square hips here, so the left hip shouldn't be higher than the right one, even though it can challenge the balance to try to work that way. And then we're gonna step to chair pose, which katasana. And we'll do the whole, uh, another vinyasa here to do the other side, to get back to down dog, to take our other side. Left leg up, square hip. This is the leg that was just in the air. We're, we're trying to square this hip off, these hips in warrior three a moment ago. Now move the shoulders forward over the wrists. One legged plank. Try to keep the feet hip distance if you can. Roll to the edge of the right foot. Variation on side plank. If that foot does not want to hover, then put the inner edges of the feet together. Look forward, step forward. Pivot your right heel down. Come on up, warrior one on the left side. This is a sequence about squaring the hips. <laughs> so sometimes it can be useful to think of that theme if it's helpful in a series of poses or sequence of poses that we're working with. So the hips should be squared here. Now as we move into warrior three, we want them to stay square, 
but you can even work a little bit more with that because now your heel's not on the floor. You can rotate your toes straight down, thigh faces the floor, palms together or arms extended alongside your ears. And chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. And let's throw a flow through Vinyasa back to down dog. All right, we're gonna pick things up just a little bit, standing pose wise. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale, step it forward between the hands. Inhale, warrior one, and then we're gonna to open to warrior two. Hold for just a few breaths here. Front heel and back arch line up. Of course, we want the hips open now. Front knee stays over the ankle though. And then let's just simply straighten the front leg and move to triangle, Trikonasana. Maybe back of the hand against the inner shin. If you wanna go deeper, you could bring your fingertips to the floor behind your shin but try to keep the sides of the torso long. We don't wanna put the hand down and then collapse the upper body down. It's not about getting close to the floor. We want extension. And then reverse, stretch back. And hands to the floor, take your vinyasa. We'll go into the other side. So really basic standing poses here. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale to bring it forward. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, open to warrior two. Uh, adjust your alignment first. So that's kind of priority one. We want to make sure our feet are in the right place to help our legs and our hips. And then we can stack the shoulders and then the arms and the upper body. They're important, but they kind of come in last. And then straightening the front leg, moving to triangle, trikonasana. And stretch back and vinyasa. Or modified vinyasa or skipped vinyasa, up to you. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step, walk, or hop forward. Half lift and fold. Chair pose. And vinyasa again, and we're gonna basically take what's a, a dancing warrior sequence. So it's gonna be really similar to what we just did, but we're gonna uh, go into extended side angle instead of triangle pose. Everything else will just be one breath per movement. Inhale, the right leg up. Exhale to step it forward. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Now let's take an inhale to reverse the warrior, so stretch back, and then keeping the front knee bent, extended side angle, hold. And come on up, reverse warrior. Take a vinyasa. We'll continue to flow right into the other side. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior and extended side. You can work with forearm on the thigh, keeping this upper arm really um, upright so that there's like your neck is long and we're not like hunching the shoulder to the ear and collapsing. Or if you wanna go deeper, left fingers start to come to the floor. If you can't get to the floor, the goal is bend the left knee more, keep dropping the right hip. And 
then reverse warrior, vinyasa. Breathing. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step, walk, or hop forward. Half lift and fold. Coming through chair. Let's straighten the legs, come all the way up. And we're gonna step out wide for Prasarita Padottanasana. So just a nice wide-legged forward fold here, parallel feet, hands to the hips, and come on down. Once you get to about halfway, Hands can start to move between the feet to the mat. Lean forward toward the balls of the feet. Let your head hang down heavy. Uh, for those of you interested, option to go to tripod headstand here. And if your feet are up, float them back down. And then once your feet are on the ground, let yourself float back up to standing. Let's turn the right toes open. Uh, we're gonna stretch back, and then we're gonna come into a bound extended side angle. So either forearm on the thigh, left arm behind you for a half bind, or drop the right shoulder in front of the knee and take the right hand under, not un, like between the legs, but under the right leg specifically, and then the left hand comes behind and we hold on to it. Twist the chest open, try to look to the ceiling with the head. Those of you interested in Bird of Paradise, and this is more of an advanced balance pose, but you can try it. If you've got a full bind, Step your left foot forward, up by that right one, and then just start to float the upper body up, standing on the left foot. Once you're up, move the shoulders back and the chest up, and then you can extend into that lifted leg. Maybe turn your head at a slight angle, away from the foot, shoulders back, leg extends, straighten your standing leg, and then bend the knee, put the foot back on the floor, Step back. Now we're still, we're all back in the bound extended side. Release the bind, reverse warrior, and let's take a vinyasa toward that right leg. You can modify or skip the vinyasa, of course. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step, walk, or hop. Half lift. Fold, chair pose, and straighten the legs, come to standing. Let's do the other side. So we're gonna take another variation on prasrita. Feet parallel, hands together behind the back, shoulder blades draw down, heart forward and lean in. Let your head hang, keep the shoulder blades on your back. Lift your quads, open the backs of the legs. Lean towards the balls of your feet. And then root down to rise back up. Let's go ahead and turn the left toes open. You can let go of the hands. Arms out and bending the left knee, coming into half bound extended side, or tucking that left shoulder in front of the knee and the arm under the leg, full bound extended side if you can. Grab hold of that back hand or wrist even, and then lift your top shoulder, looking up towards the ceiling if you can, opening the chest. Bird of Paradise. Give it a try. If you did on the first side, try it on the second as well. So the right foot will come to step up by the left foot. The toes are pointing towards the front edge of your mat. And then try to keep that bind. Find the balance as you float up onto the right leg. The left just kind of 
comes up with you. Straighten your standing leg, straighten your body as much as possible. Look up, move the shoulders back, and then flex your foot and reach through the heel to extend the left leg out and away, and then maybe turn your head a little bit over the right shoulder. Smile. <laughs> Make sure you're still breathing here. And then when you're ready to come down, bend your left knee so you can gently place your left foot back on the floor. Step the right foot back into place. Keep lifting that top shoulder. Release your bind. Float up, reverse warrior. And hands to the floor for vinyasa. Let's take the knees down. We're gonna take forearms down and set up for dolphin pose. So in dolphin, well, you can work with forearms parallel. I know some people like to do this, uh, even if you don't have to, because it's a good practice if you would like to practice forearm balance at some points. Um, but if you don't wanna do that, because this can be a little more challenging, just interlace the fingers. Root the forearms down, tuck toes, lift knees and hips, move the heart back. Let your neck relax so the head is hanging heavy, but it shouldn't touch the floor. If the head is like resting on the floor, you got to work a little more in the arms. So push the forearms down to lift your shoulders up so that the neck can lengthen. Let's take the right leg into the air. Reach those toes for the ceiling. Push down with the arms, lift up with the legs, so stretch. And then right toes back to the ground, switch sides. And then toes down, knees down, hips to your heels. Let yourself lengthen the arms. Maybe flip the palms up and bring the hands on your shoulders. Head is down here. Okay, so in this next dolphin, I'm gonna give you again the same option, but if you are thinking about taking a little practice of forearm balance, I encourage you to maybe this time try lining up those forearms in parallel. The idea is that we don't wanna to start to let the hands wander in or the elbows wander out. Like it's not like that, right? So they really wanna stay parallel, which means we sometimes just have to like traction against the mat. Like that's kind of what our sticky mat is for. And so we should really use it. If this is really challenging for you, another option, and I didn't you know, say to have a strap tonight, but you can wrap a strap around your upper arms and oftentimes that helps keep the elbows in place a lot better so that they stay under your shoulders. But in any case, let's whether your fingers are interlaced or whether you've got the parallel arms with the palms flat, we wanna come back up with the head hanging and then take the right leg into the air and this time take some little hops up off the left toes. Little hops. And then switch, so right foot down, left leg up. These hops, the top leg should be straight, but the bottom knee is gonna bend to spring you off the ground and to soften your landing as the toes come back to rest. And then toes to the ground, knees to the ground, hips to the heels, just another child's pose here. All right, so either keep practicing. If you wanna take a headstand tonight, you, you may. But I'm actually gonna to move to the wall and just give a short practice of forearm balance against the wall. If you wanna join me, I will talk through it. I encourage you to actually move your mat to a wall because this is a hard one to practice like on a hard surface or even on a rug surface because as I mentioned, we want the traction of the mat to keep our arms in place. Okay, so unlike headstand, the head is not going to be on the ground. If as you come up into this pose, your head ends up on the ground, come down, put your feet back on the floor and just try it again. So headstand is, should be a distinctly different pose. There are similarities. And if you'd rather practice headstand, you know, do it intentionally, but as opposed to sort of the default position of forearm balance, your head drops to the ground, that we don't want to kind of do it that way because it's going to be really hard to work against it once you get in the pose. 
All right, so just like we set up before, forearms parallel. And we really do want to do the parallel forearms now as opposed to the interlaced fingers. Elbows under shoulders. If you want to use a block as a spacer between your hands, you may. And then like we just did a moment ago, tuck the toes, one leg is going to lift and the other leg is going to spring you off the floor. And then see if you can get the, the heels to the wall or to the painting on the wall as the case may be. And then the head should again be freely hanging, push down with the forearms, and then you can start to work towards getting yourself more vertical. You can move the hips away from the wall a little bit to try to get them over the shoulders, reach through the inner feet. You can try to work for balance. If you come down, you can practice kicking up again, especially make sure that you're trying to kick up on, the, on both sides. So if you know which foot was your kickoff leg last time, try to switch it this time. And we'll just take a few more seconds or maybe a minute here to try for uh, just to practice again. So let this be your practice. Don't hurt yourself and be safe. That's really important. Um, but it's, if you're feeling safe, you know, sometimes just the little kicks, like just if this is all you're doing tonight, that's fine. Just practice is totally fine. You don't actually have to get up into the pose for the practice you're doing to be of value. This is probably the inversion that I practice the least. So every once in a while, I have to remind myself to put it in my classes um, because, you know, I think it's important to be well-rounded in your practice if possible. Um, forearm balance is a lot more work in the shoulders than either handstand or headstand. So you might feel that working in there, those shoulder, that whole shoulder area is getting warm. And then when you're ready to call it a day on that particular practice, let's come back to the mat. So you can move your mat back to the center if you need to, or back to where you want it. Since we're at home, you can have it wherever you want. Okay. And then let's go ahead and come back to downward facing dog. From down dog, let's take the right leg into the air. Inhale, exhale, step it forward between the hands. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. We're doing a little dancing warrior here. Inhale, reverse warrior. Let's go ahead and come into half moon. So instead of going into extended side, we're just going to flow right into half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. Push through the lifted heels, stack the shoulders. Now from here, let's see if we can revolve our half moon. So take the left fingers to the floor. Try to re-level those hips and then take the right arm up into the air. Keep your left leg in the air. Do your best. Now from here, it's actually pretty easy to go to revolve triangle. We're already revolved. So we just want to put our back foot down and then slide the left fingers back so they line up with the right toes. Make sure your back heel is on the ground and both legs are straight. Now from here, both sets of fingers on the floor, standing split, float your back leg up, fold into that right leg. Maybe right hand behind right ankle or heel to draw you in a little deeper, left leg higher. And then stepping the left foot back, lower the left knee down. We're gonna go further into our splits practice. So pop onto your right heel. This is Ardha or half Hanumanasana. Hanumanasana is splits basically. So it's the pose for Hanuman who is one of the Hindu gods or, yeah, so, um, so that's why it's named that. <laughs> but we're gonna fold over the right leg, Ardha Hanumanasana. If you wanna come to full Hanumanasana, if you have open hamstrings, you can start to slide your right heel forward and come just deeper into your splits practice if you're up for the more, for, for higher levels of bendiness. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself though here. Now, if you're really deep into the splits, so this is kind of, usually I know that my body's warm and ready. If 
I can actually feel my hamstring touch the ground. In which point, at which point you're pretty stable. You can also slide a book or a block under your right leg so that the hamstring comes to the ground. And then maybe you can take the arms up. You could take it to a forward fold over your front leg. This upper body gets a lot more free, so you can play around there if that feels right to you. All right, and then when you need to come out, because this can be an intense pose, palms to the floor. Let's go ahead and just find your way back to down dog. If you want to take a vinyasa, you can, but it might just be going straight there. And give yourself a moment to shake out the right leg or kick through the heel. And that was actually a lengthy sequence, but we're going to do it on the other side as well. So take the left leg up into the air, inhale, exhale, step it forward. Warrior one, and we're starting with kind of a little bit of a dancing warrior framework. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, and then we're floating into half moon pose, which is a balance pose, of course, but our facing continues to be towards the right side of the mat. Our right arm is up, our right leg is pushing behind us. Now, we're gonna keep our right leg up, but we're gonna revolve this half moon pose by bringing the right fingers down, level at the hips. So your right leg is gonna rotate. It's not gonna come down, but now the toes are pointing towards the ground instead of to the side. And then the left arm goes up for the twist in the torso. And then uh, keep your right leg or your left leg straight, uh, the right as well. But we're just going to kind of lean back until that right foot comes down, heel on the floor. Slide the right fingers back, and then the left arm can stay in the air. I kind of brought it down to demonstrate, but arms still stack, revolve triangle. And then both sets of fingers on the floor, standing split. Fold toward the left leg, lift the right leg up. If that leg's only coming as high as your hip, that's, that's normal, but you can, you're allowed to start to bring it higher if your body says yes. Step back with the right foot. Lower the right knee down. Straighten the left leg, and ultimately what we want, we don't want to have our hip over our heel, we want to have our hip over our knee, so our right thigh is vertical, and then we pop onto our left heel, the left leg is straight, and we fold for Hanuman Arda, or half Hanumanasana. Hands can be on the floor, um, unless they can't, right, and then you can put it on blocks or a book or something. If you're able to and would like to go deeper, if it's not going to cause distress, because we don't want to be distressed in our poses. Like that's, that's just not the aim at all. Sometimes there's an intense sensation, but it should not be pain or distress. Again, if you can get that thigh down and one side you might get it down, the other side you might not. So Pay attention to what's going on, and sometimes it just takes a few breaths if you actually can go that deep. But don't try to push your hips to the floor. Just try to gently release, let gravity do almost all the work for you. But then you could maybe play with the arms or not. Put the hands on the ground when you need it. The side's a little target, tighter for me tonight. Okay, find your way back to down dog. No rush. Take your mat with you. <laughs> All right, down dog. Shake out the left leg if you need to, or kick through the heel here. All right, let's take knees to the floor again, and we're gonna take camel pose, Ustrasana, just doing a little bit of back bending. So uh, toes tucked on the first one, hands to your hips, lift the heart. Maybe the hands come to the heels, but we don't wanna lean our hips back just to get the heels. Hips should stay over the knees. Chin in, or if you're able to, you can drop your head all the way back onto your shoulder blades. And then support your waist. 
Come back up. Just for a moment, bring your hands to the floor and take downward facing dog. Let's take the knees to the floor for another back bend. So this time you might choose to extend your feet. If you'd like to catch your heels and you can't with extended feet, but you can with tucked toes, then you can keep them the way you like it. Hands behind the hips support you. Maybe hands to heels. Maybe you can also just keep them on your back as well. Chin in or that head could drop back to your shoulder. We're down to open up. All right, and then support yourself to come up again. And this time, let's drop to the heels. Bring the hands behind, lean back, lift the knees, stretch the tops of the feet or the shins. And then knees back to the floor. Down dog, just a little narrow down dog. We're gonna take a twist here, so we wanna be able to reach our left hand to our right outer leg. Hold on and twist. And switch directions. Right hand to left leg, pulling through best you can. All right, now let's take the knees to the floor. Separate your feet so you can sit between them. Hero pose, Virasana. This can also be done sitting on the feet, but these next stages may not be appropriate for you if you're sitting on the feet. If you actually have your hips down to the floor between the feet, then you can go ahead and lay back. For those of you who are only um, part way down or you're sitting on a block or something, you can go back as far as the forearms potentially, puff up the chest and let the head go back. Uh, but if you're really down, you can let your whole body come down. It's optional, you don't have to. Breathe, fall asleep. <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm gonna do. Like, oh, my head has hit the floor. Time to sleep. All right, so support yourself with your hands on your feet. Come on up and we're gonna go ahead and um, do a little bit of hip work here. So we're gonna tuck the right leg in. We're gonna take a uh, Gomukhasana, which is cow face pose. So we're gonna take the right knee uh, to the bottom, I guess, and then the left leg comes over the top. and. We, it's not just that the legs cr is crossing, but it's actually stacking knee over knee. And then we're not putting the sole of the left foot on the floor. We're just kind of the edge of the foot is on the floor. So we've got kind of both knees coming to a point here. And then we're going to take the left arm up, bend the elbow, and then reach for the elbow with the right hand. And then this could be it, right? This could just be your pose. You're upright. You're pulling the elbow to your head. You're lifting your body but you could start leaning forward. That's one thing, you can get into the hips that way. For those of you who have open shoulders, right arm out, rotate it, and then slide it behind your back, bend your elbow, and then clasp the hands together behind you. Keep lifting the left elbow up, um, but then the fold can happen in either case, and that's just gonna stretch a little bit into the hips here. All right, come up with the upper body and release the class that you had. Lean back, we're just gonna change the legs. So the left leg's gonna go onto the bottom and the right one over the top. And it might naturally happen that the sole of the right foot is on the floor. So use your hands to help you adjust it so we get those 
knees stacked and kind of coming to a point. And then the right arm goes up, bend the elbow, reach for the elbow with the left hand, maybe upright, maybe a little lean forward. If you did the arms on the first side, at least try it on the second side. You may find that one side is possible and the other side isn't. That's actually pretty common, but you wanna at least give it a try and give your body a chance to show itself to be somewhat symmetrical, even if we all know it's not always gonna work out that way. If you wanna lean in, you can give yourself a deeper stretch by doing that. Come on up slow. Let go of the hands if you've got them. And let's uncross the legs. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna come to pigeon stretch. This is gonna be kind of an odd way to come into it, but we're just gonna move the right knee like to the edge of the mat and let the shin cross the mat and then lean the hands forward so we can slide the left leg behind. But then make sure you've rolled off of the right hip. So you might have been on the right hip to get into the position, but then roll off of it and then fold down over that right shin. Okay, so come on up. We're gonna stretch the left quad. So you might just support yourself with the right hand as you bend the left knee behind you and reach back with the hand for the foot. Um, any variations you'd like to do here are fair game. All right, now we're gonna let the foot go. We're gonna rock back to our right hip. And we're gonna keep the right knee bent and kind of tuck that foot towards our left leg and then roll onto the back of the left leg. So anyway, we're coming to Janya Shirshasana or actually if this is, as opposed to being really Janya Shirshasana, this is a little bit wider. So we are gonna to fold towards the left leg first. Then we're gonna move to somewhat of a side stretch. So if possible, take your left arm over and sort of reach for that right leg and then right arm over. Side stretch, long side of the ear. All right, float on up. Let's take both legs out wide. So we're gonna kind of go to the other side, but like by reversing our course a little bit. So uh, take the legs out wide. We're gonna do just a center stretch here. Flex both feet and fold down.
and come on up. And we're gonna tuck the left leg in. So sole of the foot to the thigh. We'll start with a forward fold over the right leg. So we're gonna do these two seated poses from this position in the same order we did the ones on the other leg. So folding first to the right leg. And then reaching with the right leg for the right hand for the left leg, the left arm's gonna come on up and over for a side stretch. All right, floating up out of that, now we want to turn our focus to our left leg for pigeon stretch. So we're going to adjust moving that shin towards the edge of the mat, roll onto the front of the right thigh, come off of the left hip, extend the back toes behind you, make any positioning adjustments you need to make with that front shin, and then fold for a hip opener. and then come on up and let's do our quad stretch on this right side. Reach back, heel towards hip, shoulders back. Let the foot go and let's go ahead and take one more down dog. So plant the palms, step back to down dog and feel free to shake out either leg or kick through the heel. You could lift the legs and bend the knees if you want since we didn't do that earlier. Take a moment or two. And then look forward, step, walk, or hop forward, and come to a seat. We're going to come to the floor to our backs here for just a nice supine twist. Um, so let yourself lower down, bring the knees into the chest, and it can sometimes feel really good to just bring them in and take the knees around in a circle like you're massaging your low back, and then maybe going the other way. And you know, the goal at the end of our practice is to really start to try to approach Shavasana so that we're released and ready to completely let go. Um, so let's go ahead and take the arms out, kind of like cactus arms. Let's drop the knees to the right, but turn the head back to the left. Breathe. And then bringing knees back through center, let them fall the other way and turn your head to the right.
All right, now come back to center. At this point, I encourage you to do any last little poses or adjustments that you need to on your back, but then just come to Shavasana, corpse pose. Um, I am gonna come up and um, come back to a seat just to close the practice with you, but you can go ahead and continue to lay on the floor. So go ahead and stay down, relax the weight of your body. Maybe take a second to lift your chest and tuck your shoulders underneath your upper back, which will help to let your chest broaden and open. Let the arms come out by your sides with palms facing up. Um, they're a little bit away from the side, so not touching the body, but they should be, you know, down as opposed to like up and overhead if possible. And then go ahead and close your eyes. Feel the weight of your body against the floor and just allow gravity to to take it on. So you don't have to use any effort to hold any part of your body up at this point. You wanna just be able to completely let go. You can let go of your ujjayi breathing practice as well and allow yourself to breathe more naturally, but do try to maintain some awareness of your breath as well as of your body in space, even though it's gonna be still. Give yourself five minutes or so in Shavasana, more if you want to and if you've got the time and then that's going to complete your practice. But I want to end this shared portion of the practice with you. And I'll just give you a simple, uh, simple bow. But the light in me recognizes and honors the light in you. Thank you so much for joining me again this evening and sharing the practice. Namaste. All right. Release into your Shavasana. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I hope you'll join me again next time. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And that's it. Take care. Namaste.